Well, it was a tough session for the market that saw pockets of panic. That's right, from an assortment of news and speculation. First, there's inflation. I think that's going to be your new boogeyman. Uh, we saw crude oil almost at 70, aluminum prices surging both to multi-year highs, uh, uh, lumber hitting an all-time high, and that bulldozed shares of home builders. The question, though, is whether the Fed will act on its natural impulses, pulses rather, to hike rates too soon, too fast, and too much. Dinner iPhone concerns this after disappointing news from Taiwan Semiconductor. We saw shares of semiconductor stocks uh, really taken to the woodshed, even those with limited exposure to Apple. Then there's all the intangibles, right? The world of pol political intrigue. It's taken a toll on the market this year, but maybe potentially good news this time for President Trump. The reports that he's not a target of either the Mueller probe or the Michael Cohen raid helped the market climb off the canvas into the close. Then, of course, there's also corporate earnings guidance, uh, mostly great so far, but certainly hell to pay for any company that comes up even a little bit short. So what will ultimately matter most to the market and where exactly is it heading? Joining me now to discuss Melissa Arma. A stock swoosh, uh, Aaron Gibbs, portfolio manager at S&P Investments and Advisory Services, and Lindsey Bell, an investment strategist at CFRA Research. All right, Aaron, let me start with you. What, what, what's, what should we be? Fo what should investors be focused on the most right now? So today, first of all, we have to put this in context because we've had eight days of an up market. So it's okay that we have a breather. So it just is? let's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's totally fine. Let's not panic. Um, certainly, inflation is a big concern. One thing you forgot to mention: cocoa had spiked. So for those of us that are panicking that our daily chocolate fix is going to get a little pricier, okay, that maybe you need to worry about. But the market's I'm, really. I'm Writing it down. Yeah, the market's really, I see this as a good thing. Look, financials were actually up today. Um, so that was one of the leadership. Is that the safe haven now? Because they all popped on earnings, gave it all back in intraday, that's those same sessions. And yep. then today, to your point, they were up. But I felt like it was, it's becoming a safe haven now. I think... I wouldn't quite say just to say, and look, we're still looking at interest rates. Uh, I think there's still going to be some good days, but right. uh, yeah, on these down days, yeah, financials had a had a very good di good day today. Listen, you're generally optimistic. Uh, are you concerned though? Because the market is trying to break out. We we tested those lows a few times. Uh, we're starting to break some upside resistance points, but it's still tough to gain and contain c c continue to have traction. I will tell you, I am positive and optimistic, so I don't want to panic anyone. But my outlook for 2018 is not the same as it used to be two months ago. And here's why. We've had too much selling. Even the banks, you pointed out, they gapped up on good earnings, fell off a planet. E-Trade is down tonight in the after hours on earnings. These banks are not falling through. You're not going to see the market, I don't think, make new highs this summer. Maybe towards the end of the year. We're in a tight, tight range. There's not enough buying. Too much selling. The market can't move higher without buying. And the banks are a leading driver of that. Next week is a big week. Tech reports, Facebook, Amazon, Google, they got to do it. They have to do it. The market isn't going to continue higher. Well, you know what? Tech single-handedly kept the market going last year, so maybe they can step up to the plate. But today, uh, Liz Clayman had the opportunity to interview uh, uh, Christine Lagarde of the IMF, and she has some interesting comments about what she's concerned about. In fact, she shares them with President Trump. Where I applaud um, President Trump is when he focuses on the overall deficit of the United States. And I'm talking here about the fiscal deficit. Uh, which is one concern that we also share because that has to be gradually over time using fiscal policy that is growth friendly that has to be brought down in the future so that the US economy is solid and strong with the two deficits addressed. So, so Lindsay, uh, she, you know, she talked about the two deficits, the other one being trade, which I'm not sure she agrees completely with Trump's tactics, but even there she sort of gave him some props. But we all talk about the, 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 our deficit and $21 trillion, but we all whistle by the past the graveyard because no one knows when it's going to blow up in our faces. Right, exactly. The uh, CBO is estimating that the deficit's going to exceed $1 trillion by 2020, and it's just going to keep going up from there. The omnibus spending bill that just passed $1.3 trillion. How are we going to 
fund that. We're going to have the government's going to have to issue some debt, and we're in an interest rate rising environment. That's going to cost us money, and that's going to be a huge problem down the line. When it's going to blow up is going to be a major concern. It just means the Fed's really going to have to be careful on how they raise interest rates in the face of inflation. So before we go, then how are you seeing the markets uh, near term and perhaps for the rest of the year? Near term, you know, I'm feeling good about it because the economic environment right now is solid. Um, I tend to agree with Melissa that you're, you're going to need to see tech or the financials really take leadership this year. Right. And if they can't, then we're all in trouble. Real quick, Aaron. Um, the markets for this year is it too early for you to say or where you which way up? No, we're still going to be up any year where you're looking at 20 percent earnings growth even though there is you know obviously sure. the tax reform that's a good year and that the was the estimate so far they're coming in even higher than exactly. that exactly yeah. so right, things ladies. are good thank you all very very much well a recent study shows opioid prescriptions are actually down 10 percent across the country yet deaths related to the drugs are on the rise this is a real issue, and I think it adds support for more security at the border. National Guard, wall, both, we need it. It's desperation time. We'll talk about it next.